This is a conversation I, I hope all of you are looking forward to as much as we are because you sit here and talk about, quote, the kids. And I think for Giants fans, all of a the sudden, there are three faces that have now come to represent, quote, the kids. Even though Kyle Harrison is 22 and Patrick Bailey is 25, there are Tyler Fitzgerald, there are other kids. But we know who we're talking about with the kids. Marco Luciano, Luis Matos, and Elliot Ramos. And all of them are in the Giants organization because of this guy. Hello, Bobby Evans. How are you? <laughs> nice introduction. Very good. How are you guys? Uh, good, we're, Bobby. We're, we're doing good, and we got a lot of stuff to, 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 uh, to ask you. Let's start with the, the success over the last month or so uh, for Elliot Ramos. What, what is your belief level that this time around it's going to stick? Well, he's still, I mean, he's 24. He's, he's, he's a victim like all these kids are of, of COVID. I mean, they missed a year of baseball, uh, really a year of development. And so I, I think we're seeing what Ramos is capable of. I mean, I think the, the reality is, uh, he's more disciplined at the plate. He's, he's, he's doing, he's doing damage with the pitches to hit. Obviously he's, he's improved all around game, including his defense in the outfield. And, you know, when we drafted him, we didn't know whether he would be able to stick at center or whether he'd have to be a corner. You know, I think that as, as he was in the development process, we looked at him more of a, as a corner guy. He's able to, you know, obviously carry his load there. He's done well offensively. He's, he's shown consistency. He's, he's shown that he's made the adjustments that we all knew he needed to make when he was here, you know, at some point last year. And if you look at his trajectory from back in 2017 when he was in rookie ball until now, it's seven years. Is that a normal sort of lifespan in the minor leagues for a 17-year-old? Should it take that long? And, and it's really not that long when you look at his trajectory. But is this about him being on time now to be in a major leaguer? Well, again, I mean, the, the key here, you're talking about 2021, even 2020. Um, you know, you're talking about some, some COVID impact. And so I, I really don't know that you can – expect any of these guys at any club at any level to have had a normal path, you know, given what COVID did to them. But that said, no, I mean, you'd like for, you'd like for a, a kid coming out of high school at, at 17 or 18, in his case, 17, you'd like for them to start talking to you about, you know, being in the big leagues at 21 and 22. I mean, that's really what you want to see. And you'd like for them to stick by the time they're 22 and 23. I mean, with college kids, obviously there's a different path and, and maybe a, a, an expectation that they get here, a little faster, but you know, high school kids, we understand it's going to take a little longer, but no, I mean the path you'd like for it to have come, come sooner. Bobby Evans with the giants front office for so long with us right now on Willard and Dibbs 95, seven, the game. Okay, Bobby, I, I hate it when broadcasters go, I got a two part question because both parts <laughs> never get answered. So, but I, I have like a, a, a one, two punch, but I'm going to separate them. Uh, here's the first one. What was your reaction to Luis Matos being sent down yesterday? Yeah, I mean, I, I, my, my empathy immediately goes to the front office because it's not what you want to do. I mean, you certainly don't want to send one of your young kids who's already proven that he's got the, the potential to stick. You don't want to send him down. Um, and yet you're, you're trying to balance, you know, a roster for a long season. And so it's a, it, it really empathize with the player, empathize, empathize with, with the club. I mean, it's a tough circumstance. I mean, it's a bad time to go cold for four or five games, right? You know, you know, somebody's coming off the DL. You don't want to be the guy that's, that's turned cold, even especially as hot as he was. So it's not a good situation. It's not what you want. And, and as a club, you're looking for a way to get him back here as soon as possible, because that's, you know, he needs to be here. FP was in here a short time ago, Bobby, and, and saying that the word is that Luis is crushed. So uh, what what does a move like this do to his confidence? Oh, yeah. I mean, again, that's, that's part of the dynamic of, of your front office and your player development people. You know, really, you got to work hard because you, you, any move at any given time can, can pose a real uh, threat to a guy's confidence or a guy's uh, rhythm or a guy's momentum. You don't want to kill momentum at all. And, and so I, I hate hearing that. I did, hadn't heard that. That's terrible. You don't want to know, you don't want to hear things like that. But at the same time, you know, I, I assure you, he knows it's part of the game and he also has a lot more confidence going back and he'll be all that much more confident, you know, coming back up, but you hope it's short lived, If it's short lived, you know, that will, you know, heal all, all ill will or all concern. But 
the longer it goes, then that could, you know, create much more, you know, difficulty in getting back into the momentum and rhythm that he had earlier. How does the front office balance the 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 mood or the attitude of a young player versus like Austin Slater at thirty one who has no options? How do you decide who to keep and who to move out, even though the younger player might be, you know, more promising for the future? Yeah, some of it's the timing where you are in the race. You know, maybe there's a maybe there's a window here where there's another another opportunity for Matos to come back, and and you don't want to sacrifice a guy that's been a part of your system, and you know that you know Slater's you know got a window here. Uh, you, you you just don't know. I mean, there's there's so many different elements, but yeah, you you don't you don't want your you don't want your um your pennant race to be in a situation where the guys that you're counting on are not ready, and so you need to get Matos back up. You need to make sure he's ready for a pennant race. If there's a wild card to be had, you want to make sure he's a part of helping you get there. Timing is everything. I mean, we're, we're, we're just entering June. So had this been a little later, this might not have been the move, but because of where we are in the year, maybe because of where the club is in the standings, maybe they, they took a more conservative route rather than go with the young guy. And, and again, that can change overnight, right? I mean, that's, that's the part of these moves that we all don't know what's going to happen two days from now versus what happened two days ago. Bobby Evans with us here on Willard and Dibs. Bobby, let's go back to Elliot Ramos for a second, because of the three, he's the one that you drafted. Um, it, when you look at his arc, um, wh- what has surprised you about his, uh, his time in the organization? And, uh, you know, how, how does, how does it compare to what you thought was going to happen when you got him? You know, I mean, we, we don't draft a guy like him, not thinking he's a future all-star. I mean, that's what we, that's what we wanted to see. I mean, that's what we were hoping for. And, and so to see, to see his, his swing and his, his approach and, and the way he carries himself, it reminds us, you know, that first day we met, you know, when he was, you know, still in high school and 17, I mean, that's, that's who we were hoping, you know, would, would develop, but he had a presence even then. And so now getting to see him in a position where he's confident, where he's supported, where he's playing a, a role, he's in an environment where he can have success. I mean, that's, that's what you dream of. And, you want to see these guys become the all-star that you think they have the chance to become when you draft them at that level of the first round. And you look at Marco Luciano in a similar vein, and he's still a young player, and he's had his ups and downs, and now he's injured. What do you think about his trajectory, not only for this year, but going forward as a major leaguer? Well, I just so much want I want everybody to find you know peace in where he plays positionally. I think that really can mess with a guy's head. It can mess with his offense. So you want the organization, the player, and even you know your fans to be able to see a path towards wh- what position he's going to be in the future. If he's if if for some reason there is internal question about his future at short, well, okay, let's 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 get on with it because I mean you know you want his bat to be ready here pretty soon. We don't want to be still debating what position he is. And you know we we draft we signed him you know looking at him as a middle infielder at short. We knew his size you know could present some challenges because he's a big kid and 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 strong and that could present some challenges. I. At the end of the day, you, you've got to you've got to make the routine play. You've got to make sure that you're confident. I think that young players invariably, you know, you can count the number of errors Derek Jeter made in his early in his minor league career. Obviously, he figured it out. You know, we think Marco should figure it out, but that's something the organization has to decide. But you just don't want the player to be in the in, in the bubble positionally when you're trying to make sure his bat's ready to come and help you on a regular basis. Bobby, you just touched on it a little bit there, what I was going to ask you next, which is go back to when you signed Marco Luciano. Was there the thought at that time, hey, he may project out of the middle infield? Yeah, I mean, we, we definitely considered that as a possibility. And you you almost have to with every with every you know every middle infielder, you've got to be able to project what where they might need to go in the future. Um, but I, you know, as, as you sit right now, the organization has to make that call. I mean, you know, Marco can't make that call for him. He can do what he can to show that he's ready, but he's got to, he's got to be given the opportunity to, you know, play where they think he should play and, and prove himself. And if it's shortstop, then you got to give him some rope and then you've got it and you've got to, you, you know, that's why we were, you know, I made sure that, you know, Ron Wotus was at, 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 you know, Brandon Crawford's, you know, first, you know, uh, gold glove press conference because I wanted to make sure that someone who puts in all that work behind the scenes, you know, should deserve, you know, the the opportunity to see one of his, his guys have that kind of success. And if he's to get that rope, does it have to be in AAA? Can it be in the major leagues or 
can he find another position while still being a pro at the major league level? No, I mean, that's very difficult. I mean, I, it's very difficult to learn a new position at the big league level. It's just, there's just too much riding on every game in the minor leagues. You can, you can, you, you can, you don't want to make errors there either, but it's, it, it's not your big league season at stake. So, uh, you know, my sense is the fact that they've kept him at short this long. I think they really, they're really hoping that that's where he can, can land. And, you know, you've got to work through the kinks. You've got to work through the, the footwork and, and through the mental mistakes. But some of that is, you know, one of the best partners you have is the guy on the other side of the, the base and Tyro's, you know, pretty doggone good. And if they can get into a rhythm together, I mean, it's going to really boost Marco's confidence. Bobby, you've been in the position of calling people up, sending them down. Um, so that that's kind of the backdrop of the question I'm about to ask you. Analytics versus human beings. How do you go about making decisions with those two things in mind? No, I mean, Brian, Brian Sabian emphasized it all along. We're dealing with people here, and he, 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 never, he never fought the numbers. He never fought the guys who brought the numbers. But he, he made sure that the numbers were considered and the analytics were, were welcome into the conversation. But ultimately, you know, we're dealing with people and we've got to make sure that, you know, we're putting, you know, a players in a position to succeed and understand at the end of the day, front offices don't win championship. The players do. And, and we rely on them. We need to make sure we put them in a position to succeed. We use the best information to, to put them where they, where they should be successful. But ultimately it's up to, to their, their endurance ability and, and uh, focus to, to achieve greatness. And so, yeah, I mean, you, you can't turn away from great information, whatever, whatever source it comes from, but ultimately you're dealing with people. This is a people business um, that uses numbers, not a number business that uses people. That's well put. And I guess the, the question then is how do you balance the two? Because it feels like, you know, the more you're able to work through your, your problems as a major leaguer, the better you're going to be able to work through them in the future. Is it tough then to have a young player and, and constantly have them on the back and forth and the yo-yo? No, it's always hard. I mean, that's why you want your top prospects, you know, even in a, in a case of a, you know, a Buster Posey, a Brandon Crawford, as much as possible when they come, you want them to stick and stay. I mean, that's really what you want. I, I remember Brandon Crawford, you know, walking back with me to the hotel after our visit to the White House in 2013, following the 2012 World Series, and he said, hey, Bobby, you know, if if you guys had stuck with me in 2011, we would have had another one. <laughs> and I, and, and I, 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 love, I love how Brandon thought about that. I mean, we made a trade at the deadline, and he ended up going down. But that's the kind of mentality you want your guys to have, that they belong, and they can make the difference, uh, you know, in the, in the pennant drive. And, and it, clearly he did, and, and we have rings to prove it. And yet, you know, at times, you've got to balance – what the needs are of the current club and, and where you think things project. But anytime you can bring your, your, your best guys up and keep them there, you're always better off. Okay, so let's go there. And, Bobby, I don't want to put you in a tough spot, but when you look at this particular Giants team right now, June 6, 2024, how would you balance winning now versus development? Well, winning now can happen with development as long as you have the right guys that are developing. And I think I think clearly everybody, including in the front office, not to mention the guys in the clubhouse, want Matos there. Whatever circumstances led to his going down, I I, I got to believe it's a short term thing. And and that once that short term decision comes back around where he's up, you know, then we're off to the races. But ultimately, everybody I think wants Matos in the, in the on that club and in the lineup every day, just because that's part of what's going to help you win. Bobby, great to have you, man. Thank you so much for doing it. All right, you got it, guys. Anytime. Bobby Evans. Yep.